This is Brock and Salk from the Alaska Airlines Studio. Streaming everywhere at 710sports.com and the 710 Seattle app. Well, R.I.P. Salk. He is indeed out. And in his place is Jake Heaps. Not a, not a full QB show. No, not a full Just one. Just a QB hour. Yeah. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to, uh, I don't know if you ever saw or ever heard the Jim Tom Sula cut from years ago. He did a little interview with a guy, and it was just two guys talking football, right? And Tom Sula was just awkward and bizarre. So hopefully neither of us are Jim Tom Sula. You and me talking. Just give me a name that you think would be good okay. as an offensive yeah. coordinator. Uh, no. What if I throw a name out? Yeah, well, Mark you, Trustman. No. It's someone you might know, right? That's maybe the best you can give me? Yeah. I don't feel comfortable. <laughs> what were we listening to? Oh, yeah, that's an interview with Jim Tom Sula, the head coach of the 49ers at that Get time. Get out of here. Oh, yeah, yeah. You knew that he was just uh, – Set for stardom in the head coaching role. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, well, Mark Trustman. Yeah. But, Jake, this is just you and me talking here. All okay. right? Nobody else. Yeah. You, me, okay. uh, you, me, and Lydia. You, me, and Lydia, and, <laughs> and Howdy in the background. So it's really just us talking here. Nobody else. And, like, no microphones. You and I just talk and shop here for an hour. Okay, right? let's, let's do it. Well, for 40 minutes because we get to answer questions at the end of it. But let's just talk some serious shop here. Let's talk what's going on over in Montlake. All right. <laughs> it is a conversation Salk will entertain. He will. It's like the lone college football conversation. Right. He's willing to entertain because it is rather fascinating. Right. It is. This just doesn't make sense. And it's relevant because yesterday Oklahoma said, well, enough's enough. Jalen Hurts is our guy. So let's not put on this charade where they really like their number two and kind of like Jake Hayner. He's a program and, and guy. Trust and me, a good Spencer thrower. Rattler, their freshman, he put it. I mean, he made this a legitimate competition. That kid came in. And, and, and by all accounts, actually fits that system better than Jalen Hurts. Has right. the ability to to throw the ball down the field, be a playmaker like Baker Mayfield and, uh, and, and Kyler Murray were. He fits Oklahoma's system and Lincoln Riley's system better than Jalen Hurts. So, it, you know, to, to have that backing and to say, okay, we know who we're going to go with week one, that means something. Ohio <laughs> State. Ohio State makes the call yesterday with Justin Fields, transfer from Georgia. Right, who is even much newer on the scene than the transfer that came over to Washington, and they kind of did the same thing. And Tay Martell transferred out. He's converting to wide receiver, it looks like, at Miami. And Justin Fields, clearly the guy at Ohio State, they make the move. Miami, in fact, uh, who plays this, this weekend against Florida, they made the call with a redshirt freshman. You're seeing team after team after team start to make these calls at that position, especially with transfers that have come in. Jacob Eason is not a transfer that came in this, this, this spring. He came in a year ago. They know Jacob Eason. They know Jacob Hayner. They know Dylan Morris, and they know Jacob Sermon. Right? This is not a we've got to get to know these guys. We are, what are we, 10, 11 days away? Yeah, we're getting pretty close. Uh, from pretty close. The number three team in the FCS, Eastern Washington, who's caused lots of problems when they have matched up in these Pac-12 games, who is mm-hmm. a well-coached, who brings back a bun- bunch of veterans, who knows who they are and what they are, and I don't think it's going to be intimidated when they walk into Husky Stadium. They may at the line of scrimmage physically, but on the perimeter they won't, and they're going to throw the kitchen sink, and you know that, whatever quarterback is playing. So we are, yeah, we're 10 Oh, and then who do they days. have week two? Who do they have week two? Yeah, Cal. they, 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 they got Cal, right? Arguably the best defense they may face in conference play this year. Interesting. Yes. And, and they have Cal week two, who gave them fits last year, so, who only improved. So what are we doing here? What 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 are we doing? That's my question. What are we what making? are we doing? What are we doing right now? And look, I understand there there comes to a point where I think Chris Peterson in this situation has said someone needs to step up, someone needs to make the decision for me, and I am all for that philosophy. And I have said that, and I've right? said that because I think that's the best thing, Jake, in my opinion, from a peer standpoint. Because that player needs to stand out. He needs to resonate to his teammates. So you need to make that decision for me. You do it on the field so your peers, your teammates, those guys in the huddle, they can respect it. It's not top down. It actually comes from the field, that decision being made. I agree with that. I do think that there is a huge, that part of it, if it can be won in that fashion, to me that is very validating. And to me, obviously the reports have come out that this battle is closer than what people think or would want it to be. And at some point, to me, the whole the whole conversation, this is what I heard uh, earlier in the week that, that really concerned me, is that Chris Peterson said that he would be, if it helped them win, that they would play all four quarterbacks. <laughs> that is a huge concern to me because I think it now, would be extremely— Is that tongue-in-cheek? 
it is tongue in cheek, but I think it's extremely detrimental to the team and to the future of this season if you start week one with both quarterbacks playing. Let's get a little bit personal here. All right. Let's get you and I get a little bit personal with both of this. Let's do it. All right. Uh, p- play the position. We both did. Uh, we both played it collegiately. We both played it locally. We both had a lot of eyes on us. And, and I'm sure there were a lot of conversations about both of us um, through the media and people that watched football and everything else. Jake, you came in as a true freshman at BYU, had a big time year. I think you bu- you beat the University of Washington, did you not? In your yeah, very week first one. start, uh, and you know, whatever whack player of the year, what you know, a, a great freshman year, and then all of a sudden, year number two comes around, mm-hmm. and there was a coordinator change, and we've talked about this before, and a new coordinator came in, and all of a sudden, it wasn't as clear cut, right. And how did that manifest? What did that do to you at that position on that team of leadership and everything else? No, oh, it, it definitely made you look over your shoulder and you started playing a different way. Like for me, it was something where, again, if I could go back to myself in that moment, I wish I could give myself so much advice that uh, would ultimately change the trajectory of my career. Which would have been what? But it was, don't look over your shoulder. Don't worry about the expectations. Don't worry about what people are saying about you. Don't worry about the guy next to you, right? Just focus on on your job, what you have to do, execute. And don't worry about the validation of your head coach. And I think that that's also something to be said is that Chris Peterson has not really validated either one of these quarterbacks moving forward. Mm -hmm. And that's also a tough place to be in as well. Yes, and I think if you were to chat with a few different folks, a little bit on the outside, right? If you were to chat with Colson Yankoff's parents, right? if you were to chat with Jacob Sermon's dad, if you were to chat with some of those folks, that I think is where some of the biggest challenge and frustration would be. Like, hey, man, this is competition. I know this this is big boy football, man. This is big business. It's a $150 million budget, and football is the engine that drives it all, and it is big-time business here. But what are we doing to validate this position? What are we doing to empower this position? What are we doing to grow this position? Yeah, and in my experience, my freshman year, okay, my freshman year, we actually started, me and and my uh, uh, competition, we started uh, rotating every other series at that BYU-UW game, week one. So it was me and Riley Nelson playing every other series, and the greatest uh, liar of it all was we won the game. And so it, our our coach and our program, we thought, hey, we could actually roll through this. We can do this. We can make this happen, play both guys. And then very quickly, week two hit, and we lost. Uh, we got uh, blown out by Air Force. Then we go to Florida State. Uh, the other kid gets hurt. Then I take over the job. And, Brock, what happened was – two weeks, three weeks, it took some time for that offense and that chemistry to finally gel together and for everybody to get on the same page, coordinator, quarterback, everybody around me to get used to me and my style and how I do things. Mm -hmm. And then finally the offense took off in the second half of the season. UW can't afford to do that right now. They need to validate and build somebody up now because they don't have – they don't have a chance to just kind of roll into the to the year week one week two week three and by week four now we get our challenge now we've been able to quote unquote go through a couple preseason games to get themselves ready to go here is a text i got yesterday that kind of add to this conversation from a former sec coach who was just kind of pinging me and kind of asking about the situation and what's going on up there in washington and he texted me, and as far as Eason goes, you know, and said, why isn't he winning this job? What, what are you hearing? I said, it really is a competitive environment. Mm-hmm. And he texted me and says, not the accuracy that Coach Peterson is used to. This is a poor system for him. Is that news to either one of you? Um, not really. Uh, I, I think by all accounts from what I've heard uh, so far, the two, like I said before on this show with you, Brock, the two things to me that stand out to name a guy – especially when you're looking at this, if you're going to start a true freshman. To me, that's what I view these guys are because they haven't played meaningful college snaps in quite some time. Who is, one, yes, who's moving the team, but more importantly, who is taking care of the football? Who can I trust? And I think the trust word, none of those guys have really built that, but from what I've heard, Eason has been taking care of the ball better than Hayner. Mm -hmm. Also, the other factor that you look into it is what is your ultimate goal as a team, as a program, if it is to be a national caliber team to compete with the big dogs, then Eason is the guy that gives you that ceiling. Hayner is the guy that his max ceiling to me is Pac-12. 
when you talk about Rose Bowl, you talk mm-hmm. about uh, a college football playoff, Hayner, to me, doesn't compete at that is, level. Is this fair to say, and I know you've done some work with all of these guys and you've seen them around a little bit, and, yeah. and you know maybe it's you know just the way they operate, it's just not as much relationship, and maybe you can't answer this. I don't want to force you to answer something that you don't know. You can just simply say, hey, I don't know in this situation, and now practices are closed as well. Yeah. Does it strike you, because I was the exact same way as you, my biggest failure, especially professionally, is I wanted to be validated by my coach. I want to do everything for Coach Zorin. I want to do everything for Coach Shep. I want to do everything for Coach Holmgren. Are they watching? Am I doing the technique right? Does this look right? Am I doing it? I just aim to please them instead of just playing the game, mm-hmm. right? And certainly playing for my teammates. I, I was so just kind of warped in so much of that thinking. Does it strike you in this comparison that Hayner's like, <laughs> I just I just play. Like, I'm not out for the validation of Coach Pete, of Coach Pete right? I, I'm 5'11". I got a good arm. I know my strengths. I know what I am. I know what I'm not. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I don't play for the validation of others and I can just play versus a Jacob Eason in that case is the one that transfers in, is the number one quarterback in America, is the one that 90% of our audience listening right now just assumes is the guy, is the one that all these AP voters who put them 13th in the country just assume right. he's going to be the guy and is carrying a lot of that. The mock drafts put him in the first round already without having played a snap. There are going to be season. more NFL scouts there this year on campus than they've had in yeah. the past solely because of that, and even the practice I was at. Had a bunch of scouts at it because, well, this kid's six six and he was the number one quarterback in America and he can throw a ball 80 yards. Mm-hmm. Is he one that strikes you that will fight what you and I fought? Or is Jacob more of just actually, no, man, easy come, yeah. easy go? Yeah, it's uh, it's actually really Shirt funny song, because you, your, your personality, you and me, are very similar in the fact that we are very, in terms of Pleasers. we want to we please. Uh, we also understand we're, we want to work extremely hard. We want everything to be perfect. Right, very perfectionist driven, um, and that's a great quality, and that can help lead to greatness. But it all it also can lead to bad bad things for you in wrong situations. Jacob Eason is kind of the anti of that, and I think that's also what uh, what what's been so hard for Peterson at times is Jacob is about as late. Jacob Eason is about as laid back of a guy as you will find. Is about as cool of a customer as you're gonna find, and sometimes you're like, "Dude, do you have do you have a pulse? Like, <laughs> does pause, anything get you fired up?" Can I pause you there for yeah. just a second? So, so this is pretty funny because I am everything that you just painted me is true. Like, just um, you know, you know, retentive, Type A, all of that, which at times was great, but also big time uh, detriment. I go to Indy, right? Yeah, and Peyton and Tom Moore and those guys thought I was the most laid back, laissez faire West Coast. No like, way. oh yes, <laughs> like for those Southerner, like for Peyton, it's just a Southerner. For Tom, I don't even know what he was. He was one of the meanest coaches you're ever going to face. Like, oh, you're just one of these West Coasty, like laid back guy. I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> but to them, I was. So yeah. that is to the extreme. I think how extreme Jacob is in this case. Yes. yes. He is just like, yeah, man, easy come, easy go. Yeah, and to me, in this environment with this program and with all the hype around him, he's got the right attitude in all of this. I, I really firmly believe that. I've talked to him multiple times, uh, you know, all, uh, tried to figure out where he's at, and he so has, will you be mad? He's had this, a great mentality. Will you be mad if this isn't it? Whenever they and they may not announce it, right? It certainly looks like they're not announcing it this week. And now we'll get to game week come Saturday, what, probably late this week. They start doing some real Eastern Washington heavy stuff yeah. and, and and put training camp in the in the trunk and, and get ready in the rear view mirror, and it's all in the windshield. And come Saturday or Sunday, they still don't make an announcement. Mm-hmm. It's still going to be split reps. They get to kick off against Eastern Washington. Is there a part of you that is just going to, as, as analyst, certainly not as fan, but just as analyst, going to be really frustrated if that's the case for the program and for those QBs in the system in particular? Yeah, because I, I've been in that situation and I, I know what that's like and I feel for them. And also, you look at Hayner. This Hayner is very much our personality, very much a type A guy, a guy that wants to you know please everybody, who wants to uh, run the operation the right way. And at times last year, I mean, there were times last year during practice where you're watching this kid and you're like, dude, this this kid's slinging it. He like he's just th- going he out throw there the ball. and throw it with confidence. Yes. And he does because he knows the system and he and he yeah. operates at a high level in that aspect at times. But he also, with that, tries to force the ball down the field. And yeah. and like you've said multiple times, sometimes you just can't see. 
Yep. You know, your height does limit you at times, and you don't have the escape. You don't have the ability to escape the pocket and make plays and extend things when things go wrong for you. Hayner doesn't have that ability. So to me, in all of this, it's it's just interesting how this has come about. And, and what I'm concerned, Brock, I am concerned, and I don't think people are talking about this enough, is – and then probably because everything has been in, in in Chris Peterson we trust, and he's built this amazing program, and he's got this great background, all those things. But in this case, last year and going into this year, offensive system. Offensive system, that is the biggest question of it all. Can this offense be successful? Can it overcome itself from last year, actually have an identity, and be an offense that can generate points and generate points every single game mm-hmm. and not have – a Pac-12 championship game where they don't even score an offensive touchdown, mm-hmm. right? With the school's greatest running back and the, the winningest, winningest quarterback. quarterback in mm-hmm. UW history. Like, how does that happen? And a second-round tight end and NFL offensive lineman. And, yeah, yeah, with a bunch of those different pieces. Uh, Jake Heaps is in. Salk is out. Uh, Salk will be back tomorrow. I think we'll be down at the Seahawks tomorrow for a little abbreviated show. This is a heavy uh, quarterback discussion. It's funny on a couple different levels. Two two other str- conversations that come up and have to come up in this. Is it Peterson and Bush Hamden's job to play for the upside? Or is it or is it Peterson and Hamden's job to win that game that Saturday? Because when I listen to the cuts of Coach Peterson, that's what I hear. I'll mm-hmm. do whatever it takes to win. Like it, it is solely about those 60 minutes against Eastern, and then it will be 60 minutes against Cal, and then it'll be 60 minutes we'll go through this list. And, you know, I think I think that is some of Chris's wiring, good, bad, and different. That it is not, hey, this Pete Carroll, I play for December, January, I play for upside, right. I play young guys. Like I, I think in Chris's world and in Bush's right there with them, it is, man, we are just solely concerned on being one and oh and do whatever we gotta do that day. I'll let you and Heaps and everybody else in the media, right, and talk and spend all the time and all the booster and everybody else. Yeah. Can spend all the time talking about ceilings and upside and stars. You want to talk about stars? Yeah. How many times has Chris Peterson taken the three-star DB and not the five-star DB? Like, this is the essence of our program. Like, this is what we do. I'm not going to get caught up in everything else. So is it his job to play for the upside and the ceiling, or is it his job to play for the stars? Is that another Joe question? (laughs) Yeah, I'm really impressed with a lot of their stars. Let's just start there. Who do you got at the top of the list? I, I honestly, I think there's some kind of tension right there. There is tension. There is big tension. And to me, when you're talking about that, Pete Carroll is also a guy who hasn't always, John Steiner hasn't always taken the overhyped, hyper, uh, you know, mock drafted guy. They've taken Richard Sherman. They've taken Cam Chancellor. They've taken guys. Bruce Irvin. Bruce Irvin. Guys they, that have, uh, you know, not warranted the praise mm-hmm. of everyone else for taking these selections, but they know what they're getting. So with Chris Peterson in that aspect, I don't care. I don't care if it's a five-star or three-star if they can play like a five-star at the college level. However, when it comes to your quarterback and you're looking at this, and again, I point to what is the goal? If you want to win 10 games and you want to be a consistent program, I'm all for that. And I think Husky football, Husky fans should be fired up about that. You have a strong culture and a strong program again that's not going away anytime soon. Mm -hmm. You are never going to see 0-12 again. You're never going to have a recruit like me that wants to go to UW but is 0-12 and there's no direction, right? And so you're not going to be in that situation again. But what you are saying is, okay, are we ever going to compete with Alabama? Are we ever going to compete with Clemson? Are we going to be elite? And if that's the question, then, yes, you do have to look at some of the upside. You do have to develop. You do have to look beyond one week at a time. So that's the big picture. What about the little picture that says to you, and I think some people around there would say, hey, I hear all of this very clearly. And you know what? Easton's skill set is a little bit greater. His arm is greater. His size is greater. His vision's a little bit greater. Maybe the processing, not so much. The accuracy, probably even. Mm -hmm. But as far as system fit with what we've got, we don't have Jalen McMillan. Not walking through those doors this year. We, We don't. We got Aaron Fuller, we got Pacelli, you got Quentin Pounds, you've got Ty Jones, you got guys. You don't have stars, right? You don't have players and personnel around Jacob Eason like he had at Georgia to fling the ball all over the field. Like I need this year with these offensive pieces and these wide receivers and, you know, just some of their, you know, we were talking about Keenan Reynolds early, Mr. Um, limited. Mm-hmm. There's areas where they're just limited. That's yep. not a rip job. They're just limited. So in, in order to maximize this system, 
in this line, in this run game, in this play action, that actually Jacob Eason's gifting is also limited because of what you have on the perimeter. It could be. It, it possibly could be. This is hard. Now, here's the thing. It is hard because— This is very hard to listen to. Oh, boy. <laughs> because basically what you're saying, Brock, you're painting a picture to say— you should not hope for a national championship competition this year. Preseason rank 13 is a ceiling for this team. They shouldn't be above that because really what you've got is a quarterback in Jacob Eason who doesn't have enough talent around him to really shine, and you got a quarterback in Jacob Hainer who's really not talented enough to raise everybody's talent level up to the point where they're one of the top five teams in the country. That's a very, very tough painting to, to swallow. But he's going to run the operation, and that's the part where... You have to look at, again, I come back to offensive system. Offensive system, offensive development. Where are they? Where are they? What is their identity? If you're going to roll with Hayner, what is that going to look like? What is the production that you're getting out of that? Because if they roll out with Hayner and there's, they're not getting the production, they're getting mm-hmm. outscored by Eastern, and they go to Cal and they lay an egg, Like that's a huge problem. Well, thankfully Cal comes here, but yes. you know, Like they did a year ago when Hayner came in. I said this too, I also brought this up, in in – Again, let me be very clear. If I'm shoved in a corner and I've got to make this decision with the limited practices that I saw, with the limited amount of intel and information I have, because I try to keep an arm's length fairly, you know, fairly so, if I have to make that decision, I lean on the bigger prospect. I do. I just lean on the more talent and I simplify it and I dumb things down and I trust the defense and a run game and that stadium and everything else that can bring to in an offensive line that can bring to life the group as they move along. And I dummy it down for for Jacob. That's that's what I think I would do in this situation. But this is legit. Like I'm not this is not just speculation or hypothetical. There's a reason the starter was a name, because these are the legit, I think, friction points that they're trying to figure out in their program and trying to figure out with a young offensive coordinator and a young play caller, what are you? What are you, Bush? What, what is this system? Right. I've had this chat with Damon, and Damon would say, say to me, what's New England? Like, that, that's great, but they also have the background and the production to go along with it. Like That's, that's the part that if you want to have that conversation, I'm all for it in terms of the Patriots because they have proven that they can do that, that they can morph and change and yep. win games. Yep. And, oh, by the way, as you've had that, you've had the greatest quarterback of all time. So you have the luxury to be able to do that a little bit. For for Washington, and you know in college football, it is different than in the NFL. College football is based on a program, and it, the better teams have a system in place that mm-hmm. they know yeah. that, that these kids can go to and that you're running plays and that you can operate at a very high level. That's why WSU, they are always going to be an extremely efficient offense. They're going to be one of the best in the country because they know those plays inside and out. However, when they play a Washington, they are limited in some mm-hmm. aspects. You have to have – some creative flair. Gosh, and then you throw one last little wrinkle in, and that is the fact you don't have preseason football. When the lights go on to see what really goes down, because I think Jacob Eason, when the lights go on, just wants to play and is the opposite of you and I, doesn't hear all these voices, heaps, doesn't hear all of this validation, and, and just goes out and wings it and plays. But you don't have that either, right? You're competing against an elite defense and a secondary that's making you know the offense. It's a secondary that made John Ross – and Jake Brown and those guys struggle toe to toe and head to head for years. Yeah, and that's what he's facing. And you really don't get any dress rehearsal. No. You get the number three ranked FCS team that knows its system. To your point, that knows what they are. That it, that will come in here full guns a blazing and and throw the kitchen sink at either one of those guys. And it will be, it will be fascinating to watch that position respond, be it Hayner or Eason, when the bullets are flying. No doubt. And to me, here's the deal. I trust Chris Peterson. I really do. I trust Chris Peterson. He has the background. He has the knowledge. He has a proven system in place. And I believe he has what it takes to win 10 games every single year. The question for me becomes now, what does this look like in terms of the national projections? What do you? What is this program going to be? A consistent... Great team good, or elite team? Exactly. It, a tier one gonna, team or a tier two team? Are you going to take that step? And, and is that the goal for this program? Well, we're going to talk a little Seahawks. That was 25 minutes. It's the most ever done on this station of straight nothing but Husky quarterback conversation, which was an absolute blast. We're going to switch some gears. DK Metcalf's having surgery today. What in the heck does that mean? Uh, we'll get back to some of those bubble discussions on this roster. And, boy, I wonder if Jake Heaps is, is interested in a pass rusher for these Seahawks. We'll dig into all of that quickly next. Heaps in for Salt Rock and Salt 710 ESPN Seattle.